the gear would cost us $50. Not gold, not platinum, 50 real life dollars each. Welcome to the Twisted Pint Tavern. Today we're visiting r slash RPG horror stories to check out one of the most horrifying stories. It literally includes D&D microtransactions. A few years ago when I was in high school, I got really into D&D lore along with a friend of mine. We wanted to play a game, but we didn't really have anyone to DM for us, and we thought that maybe a professional might be the best option to help us really learn what the game was about. So we hired a DM. Now I have to say that I have no problem with paid DMs, obviously. They provide a professional service for fun when they wouldn't otherwise, and we were more than happy to pay him for that. This goes beyond that, as you will see. So I personally am not like super against professional DMing. I mean, I know some people are against it, but at the end of the day, you're paying someone to provide you with a source of entertainment. And if they're creating their own world and you think that's worth putting a few bucks a night towards, then, you know, that's great. That's between you two. And I don't think there's a big issue with that. I do think, however, that some people take their quote, professional DMing to extreme levels. Our campaign is set in the Forgotten Realms, but the campaign is homebrewed. The setting is somewhat post-apocalyptic. We generally went through the first month or two just fine with no issues. Our characters, there were five of us at the table plus the DM, began to buy more equipment and actively search for magic items to strengthen our characters. It was kind of necessary as this campaign was brutal. The first red flag was when we talked to this NPC about a quest for this bone bow, a magic item in the Underdark, but he would only tell us the location if we paid him. We assumed he meant in-game gold and asked how much gold. Then the bomb drops. The DM in character says, Oh no, your gold is no good here. I will require something a little more green. Yes, he really was that cringe about it. He wanted 10 fucking dollars for an in-game magic item. We all figured out what he was talking about and just looked at him like, what the hell? He tried to trick us into thinking that this was normal for paid games since we were all new players, but we, even back then, were suspicious. But we didn't really have a frame of reference and we liked the game, so we stupidly decided to simply reject the quest and move on. So, we've all probably played games with microtransactions, I mean, Call of Duty, Overwatch 2, any of those, and people are like either really for or really against them. I'm not really that for them. I get that they have their place in the gaming industry, but I feel like too many game companies use them as like a cop-out for, well, I'm not gonna give you the full game that you already bought, I mean, why would I do that? No, I'm gonna charge you a little bit more here and there. That's what this DM is doing. He's not only charging them to run the session for them, which again, professional DM, whatever, that they made that choice, but he's not only doing that, he's adding microtransactions to his D&D game. He's like, oh, well, if you want this really nice quest over here, this quest that leads you to this magical bone bow, you must Venmo me 10 US dollars. Otherwise, I would not give you access to the quest. That, what? What the hell is is with that? That doesn't even make sense. Like, there's there's the meme about bribing the DM, and then there's the DM straight up asking you to bribe him. Anyway, the microtransactions would get worse. A couple weeks after that, I remember we were leveling up after defeating a mini boss. Our wizard was leveling up. He had waited late to choose his subclass for roleplay purposes, but he was now level 5 and he decided to go with Chronergy. The DM then tells the wizard, Nice choice, you'll go far with Chronergy and it'll only be 20 bucks. At that point, the wizard started calling him out in real life. Yeah, I would too. He said the DM was ripping them off, and the DM said that it was an elite subclass and is kind of OP. He also said that it was basically the price of one extra session. He then tried to make the wizard feel like he was greedy and petty for not paying for one measly extra session. The wizard then straight up called him a greedy bastard and left the table. So dude's trying to make the wizard's player sound like he's the bad guy here for not- Oh, you just don't want to pay for one little extra session. 
dude, if, if it's 20 bucks, you're charging 20 bucks a session. I don't know if this is 20 bucks per table for the night or 20 bucks per person at the table for the night. I'm assuming it's per person. That's usually the way the paid DMing things tend to go. So you're already getting 80 to 100 bucks out of these guys. And yeah, depending on how many hours you're putting in, maybe that's not great for your hourly, but you're literally getting paid to run D&D. And now you're trying to gaslight this guy into thinking that he's the cheap, greedy one because he doesn't want to give you 20 extra dollars. Especially because it's not even for like this homebrew thing. It's it's something in the book. It's a base option through the D&D books. You're not, you, you're taking gatekeeping to a whole new level. You're putting the gate behind a paywall. We didn't leave. Man, we were idiots back then. We really thought that this was our only chance of playing D&D and that we could avoid these ridiculous microtransactions. Well, we were wrong. Over the next couple of months, the DM gradually added more and more microtransactions to the game, usually in the form of prestigious gear and weapons sold at vendors. We still had not actually bought anything, which seemed to make the DM angry. It gradually got worse to the point where we were legitimately underprepared if we didn't buy anything. I remember talking to the party in a secret group chat. The DM hated the idea of us talking behind his back. Dude, you're a paid DM. You're not even like part of the friend group that's just brought into play. You don't get a right to that. And debated on whether or not to cave to his financial demands or just leave the game. We ended up once again compromising and deciding to keep playing without buying anything. We would struggle and potentially die a few times, but we thought we could at least finish the campaign. Call it the sunk cost fallacy, if you will. Speaking of uh, shady endeavors and sunk costs, I have to take care of something real quick. I'll be right back. Luke Goblin, Crow, I've got your drinks. Ah, thank you. Any idea when they'll let us out? Yeah, it's been days since they lured us here with beholder-shaped cookies. They say after the first episode of our new podcast releases on Friday, we'll be free to go. We? I don't see you locked in a cell. Well, they're letting me keep the tavern running in exchange for using the basement as a makeshift prison. Funnily enough, I already had the cages installed, for some reason. Well, in that case, I'll take another drink and beholder cookie. Make it two. Oh, and be sure to tell the tavern patrons to check out the podcast channel so they can catch the first episode. You got it. Two drinks, cookies, and a podcast announcement coming up. Well, it's about time to let the cat out of the bag. Luke Goblin, Crow from Crow's Perch, and I are starting a podcast called Definitely Not a Mimic, and it is a D&D and TTRPG podcast. We've already recorded the first episode, and it is going live this upcoming Friday. Make sure to go check out the channel by either clicking the card in the top right corner of the video right now, or by the link in the description below. We are super excited to be starting this podcast, so if you guys would like to support it, go subscribe to the channel now, and make sure to turn on notifications so you get alerted as soon as the first episode drops. But anyway, back to the video. Now, uh, moving on. This brings us to one of the most important quests of the game. The DM hyped it up like it was nobody's business. We were going to the corrupted Feywild to find out the secret of this noble house that would help us learn the weakness of the BBEG and either save or conquer the world. We get to the mission and the quest giver tells us that we need a special type of gas mask to survive the Feywild due to the toxic air from the evil corruption. The gear would cost us $50. Not gold, not platinum, 50 real life dollars each. There was no other way to reach the Feywild as we had tried in passing throughout the campaign. The DM was effectively charging us to play the main story that he was already charging us for. I cannot imagine asking people to pay you for the one way to complete your campaign. Like, let alone, like, ignore the fact, okay, that this is a paid DM. Ignore that fact. Imagine that this happened at a normal game table. You're sitting down, one of your buddies is the DM, and he tells you that, hey, in order to progress, you need to get this special gas mask. And this special gas mask is gonna cost you 50 bucks. You'd think he was joking. You'd think he was full of shit. And then, he would pack up his books and leave until you texted him or Venmoed him the 50 bucks. That is just ridiculous. And now throw the fact that the DM's already getting paid and it just, it's, it's just ridiculous. I don't know how I grew a pair that day, but every single one of us looked at the DM with disgust, got up and walked out. The DM then tried to beg us to come back. He tried to tell us bullshit about how we can technically progress through the story without it. He then tried to offer us discounts until he realized we weren't coming back and he decided to unleash a volley of insults at us. 
discounts that's his method of apology not saying i'm sorry that i put microtransactions in my dnd game not saying i'm sorry that i pray to a poster that has the blizzard logo on it and says microtransactions and gold font underneath not that his form of apology is discounts what was it i'll give you 20 percent off the gas mask if you come back and finish the game and then you tell him no and he starts insulting you i don't i don't i can't fathom this okay like here's the deal again paid dming some people are really against it some people are really for it i personally think you do you dog like i'll be honest if someone came to me and they're like hey man you know your brother or your friend was telling me stories about your DD games and i'd like you to dm for me and my friends i know you don't know me i know that you're busy so how about we just all like pitch in uh, 50 bucks for the night and we'll provide dinner and i get food and money to go dm a session i'll be honest that's pretty tempting i don't know if i'd do it or not but i wouldn't just immediately say that's evil absolutely not it's kind of like the whole you're paying for a service right but then to go and take the thing that people are already paying for and tell them not just the cosmetics but the things they need to progress the game or just like the bare minimum magic items they need to make it possible to not die are gonna cost them extra money is just sleazy and greedy and i hate it so much and it's not even like it's just like a funny haha joke right like i saw this video i honestly cannot place it right now but it was like these people playing DD on a stage and one dude like holds up an envelope and he says these envelopes are like five bucks each and someone jokingly like says, oh, I'll do it. And they hand him a $5 bill and he hands it to them. And it's like got a wish in it or something like that. That's clearly a joke. That's the point of the thing. If you want to run a microtransaction one shot just for the hell of it. And then you like put all the money that everyone pays into a pool and you guys go get dinner and ice cream or whatever afterwards. Fine. Do you do that? But don't nickel and dime people that are in your D&D game because you want to try to milk them for more money. Oh, all right. We're done with that one. That one was bad. Um, if you guys would like to hear uh, part two of my thoughts on this, please Venmo me $50 and I will email you a special redeemable code for one free YouTube video ending. Oh God, I cannot imagine putting microtransactions in my D&D games. If you guys have thoughts on this, which I'm sure there are some thoughts on this out there, let me know in the comments because I would love to make sure that I'm not the only one who thinks this is insane. I know I'm not the only one that thinks this is insane because this is insane. And in case you have missed that little thing in the middle there, yeah, we're starting a podcast. Me, Luke Goblin, and Crow from Crow's Perch are starting a D&D and TTRPG podcast called Definitely Not a Mimic. The first episode is going to release this Friday and it is going to be a fantastic podcast. We already had so much fun recording the first episode and we cannot wait to continue to just ramble on about D&D stuff into a microphone for your enjoyment. But anyway, thank you guys again for watching. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you've not done so already. Let me know your thoughts to this story down in the comments or in the Twisted Pine Tavern Discord server, and we will see you in the next video. Remember to mail in your checks uh, to catch the next video. It is a paid only thing, microtransactions and all. Uh, you know, gotta make money somehow, and clearly this is the only successful business model. What do you mean this isn't what you ordered? I know you ordered a pint of ale. I gave you a pint of ale. Look, it's not my fault you didn't buy the mug to go with it. I told you the mug's five gold extra. Well, don't get all mad at me that it's spilled all over the table. You're the one who was ill-prepared.